dispute. The whole thing is outrageous. I mean, he's an outstanding scholar. He's produced uh, book after book. He's got recommendations from some of the leading scholars in the many areas in which he's worked. Uh, the uh, uh, faculty, the departmental committee unanimously recommended him for tenure. Uh, the only, and it's amazing that he hasn't had full professorship a long time ago. Uh, and as you were saying, there was a huge campaign led by a Harvard Law professor, Alan Dershowitz, uh, with the, uh, to try uh, in a desperate effort to defame him and vilify him uh, so as to prevent him from getting tenure. The details of it are utterly shocking, and as you said, it got to the point where the DePaul administration uh, uh, called on Harvard to put an end to this. Uh, what That's the very significant yeah, well, for one university to call uh, on the leadership a, of another university to, to stop, stop one of its professors. Maniac, you know, what's behind it? It's very si simple and straightforward. Uh, Norman Finkelstein wrote a book, uh, which is in fact the best compendium that now exists of uh, uh, human rights violations in Israel and the uh, blocking of diplomacy by Israel and the United States, which I mentioned. Very careful scholarly book, as all of his work is impeccable. Uh, also about the use of the uses of anti-Semitism to try to silence uh, critical discussion. And the framework of his book was a critique of uh, uh, a book of apologetics for atrocities and violence by Alan Dershowitz. That was the framework. So we went through Dershowitz's chart claims, showed in great detail that they are completely false and outrageous, uh, that he's uh, lying about the facts, that he's an apologist for violence, that he's a passionate opponent of civil liberties, which he is, and he documented it in detail. Now, Dershowitz is intelligent enough to know that he can't respond. So he does what any 10th rate lawyer does. When you have a rotten case, you try to change the subject, uh, maybe by vilifying op opposing counsel. All right, that changes the subject. Now we talk about whether you know, opposing counsel did or did not commit this iniquity. And uh, the, the tactic is a very good one, because you win even if you lose. I suppose your charges against are all refuted. You've still won. You've changed the subject. The subject is no longer the real topic. Uh, the, the crucial facts about Israel, Dershowitz's uh, vulgar apologetics for them, which sort of are, re are reminiscent of the worst days of Stalinism. We've forgotten all of that. We're now talking about whether Finkelstein did this, that, and the other thing. And even if the charges are false, the topic's been changed. Uh, that's the basis of it. But Dershowitz has been desperate to prevent this book from being First of all, he tried to stop it from being published in an outlandish effort, which I, I've never seen anything like it, you know, hiring a major law firm to threaten libel suits, or writing to the government of, governor of California. It was published by University of California Press. When he couldn't get, stop the publication, he launched a jihad against Norman Finkelstein, simply to try to vilify and defame it, in the hope that maybe what he's writing will disappear. Uh, that's the background. It's not, incidentally, the first time. I mean, I, actually, I happen to be very high on Dershowitz's hit list, hate list, and he's also produced outlandish lies about me for years. You know, I told him I was a, an agnostic about the Holocaust. I mean, I wouldn't tell him the time of day, you know, and so on and so forth. You mean that he made that charge against you? And on and on. I want to talk about it. What's the reason? It's in print. In fact, you can look at it on the Internet. Uh, in 1973, I guess it was, uh, the leading um, Israeli human rights activist, Israel Shachak, who in incidentally is a survivor of the Warsaw Ghetto and Bergen-Belsen, and headed a small human rights group in Israel, which was the only real one at the time, came to Boston, had an interview with the Boston Globe, which he identified himself correctly as the chair of the Israeli... League of Human Rights, uh, Dershowitz wrote a uh, vitriolic letter to the Globe condemning him, claiming he's lying about uh, uh, Israel. He's even lying about being the chair. He was, he was voted out by the membership. I, I knew the facts. I, in fact, he's an old friend, Shachak. 
So I wrote a letter to the Globe explaining it wasn't true. He, in fact, the government did try to get rid of him. They called on their membership to flood the meeting of this small human rights group and vote him out. But they brought it to the courts, and the courts said, yeah, we'd like to get rid of this human rights group, but find a way to do it that's not so blatantly illegal. Uh, so I sort of wrote that. Uh, Dershowitz thought he could brazen it out, you know, Harvard Law professor. So he wrote another letter saying, Shachak's lying, I'm lying. And he challenged me to quote from the Israeli court decision. It never occurred to him for a minute that I'd actually have the transcript, but I did. So I wrote another letter in which I quoted from the court decision, uh, demonstrating that it was polite, but that Dershowitz is a liar. He's even falsifying Israeli court decisions. He's a supporter of uh, atrocities. And he even is a passionate opponent of civil rights. And this is like uh, the Russian government destroying an Amnesty International chapter by uh, flooding it with Communist Party members to vote out the membership. Well, he was went berserk. You know, and ever since then, I've been one of his targets. In fact, anyone who exposes him as what he is, is going to be subjected to this technique because he knows he can't respond, so must return to vilification. And in the case of Norman Finkelstein, he sort of went off into outer space. But it's an outrageous case. Uh, and the fact that it's even being debated is outrageous. Because it's a very, you just read his letters of recommendation from literally the leading figures in the many fields in which he works, most respected people. Most interesting, the letters of support from the leading Holocaust scholars yes. like Raoul Hilberg. Raoul Hilberg is the founder of Holocaust studies, uh, you know, the most distinguished figure in the field. In fact, he says uh, Norman didn't go far enough.